by the time I was 13, I was already, I started drinking and popping pills. Yeah. And uh, by the time I was 15, I was snorting coke and selling all this stuff. Yeah. And my mother passed away from breast cancer. We ain't self-made. We're God-made. We're yours truly. We want you to get empowered to edify body. God made. What it do, everybody? It's your boy ASAP, man. You are tuned into the God Made podcast. I have been waiting for a long time to get my boy, Brother Bo, on the podcast. I'm grateful that you even came on, man. What's good with you? What's good, brother? I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. So um, I just met you today for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But uh, yeah, man, we've been doing some crazy great things for the kingdom. I'm grateful to have you as my brother, you know, doing these things with me. Same, bro. We've been putting out some music. I know y'all love that song, Not Forgotten. And yeah. they've been they've been rocking that, man. They be, they be loving what you've been doing. I've been getting some letters with your name on there, too. So if y'all do want to uh, write my boy, Brother Bo, y'all could just send it to the same address that's in the description of this video. I'll make sure that he gets it. So what's up, man? Like, what's popping, man? I'm glad that you're on here. Yeah, man. I'm I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. God is good, man. He's He's definitely faithful. Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. So like, what's, what's, what's uh, God been doing in your life, my boy? God made music. You know, God's been moving heavily, man. Uh, he just continues to 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 open doors and and that's what he does man yeah he's the one when we surrender to him and ask him to lead us lord i just want your will for my life will yeah. you show me where to go will you shut the doors because if he don't shut doors i'll just keep walking Thanks. i'll walk through all kinds of doors mm -hmm. i need his guidance i need the holy spirit and uh i feel yeah, like that man. somebody needed to hear that you know like because god might have shut a door for you Maybe lock the door. You can't even open that door now because he's like, I need to get you alone. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we was over here at the house. We didn't even plan on doing this song called Not Forgotten. Mm -mm. We over here in the studio. We just, we, he puts on this beat and I'm like, bruh, we're about to go to the, uh, the Florida prison, Florida State Prison, right? Yeah. And we're about to go minister out there for the first time. It was it was very emotional for me to go out to the Florida State Prison because I'm seeing people walk in the yard and I'm starting to get all emotional because it kind of brought me back to, you know, when I was locked up. But we were sitting in here coming up with this song and it was hitting us, right? You yeah. were, I will not forget you. Yeah. You will not. Ooh. And it go hard, man. And so we, we, we knocked out that verse, that song. We actually had that song already released for a couple of months. Yeah. And uh, we was in the process of shooting that music video. But you know what's really cool? Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy, DJ, um, the other guy that was in the, the music video with us, he just got out of doing 20 years straight. Mm -hmm. And so he's come, he, he got out of jail. You know, God already opened up an opportunity for him to be able to minister in a way, you know, yeah. through acting and just being a part of what God was doing through the video. And so that meant a lot to him. He wasn't acting, you know, he was really, he really, he told me that when that, when, at the end scene, when those doors would would just shut and he kind of looked away, he said, I seen that, that, that those doors shut so many times and it just brought him back so yeah. many times. And that's part that, that, that shot of me pulling that camera back. Cause I, I'd be filming the videos too, guys. And I was pulling back that shot. And and I saw that do that door. And I had, had it in my mind the 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 door locking and everything, and it was an emotional scene. The ending of just yeah. being like, man, you know, he's still in there. Yeah. But you know, since we writing the the letter, you know, we still we still we still like doing as much as we can from in the free world to be there for them. Yeah. You know, and and we only can do so much. Yeah. And and but we we're doing as much as we can to uh, to be there for them. But it was just really cool. Yeah, that DJ they, part of that. They, you know, it, it's, and the thing is, is out of sight, out of mind, right? So, like, we got this busy world going on around us. Yeah. And, and, and most people, they do get forgotten. That's why Jesus said, don't forget them. Mm. That's why Jesus said, you, you know, I was in prison and you visited me. Yeah. Because the Lord wants them to know that they are still valued in God's Value, eyes. Value, purpose, yeah. too. And God still has a purpose and a plan for their life, yeah. right? And I remember when I was locked up, 
I felt alone. I felt like everybody forgot about me. Yeah. You know? And, I, I uh, did have everybody forget about me. Yeah. Nobody came and visited me in jail. Yeah. Not one person. Mm. My mom did after at one point in in, in my in my uh in my life after like over time going to jail after knowing God. Yeah. Uh, but no one ever came. It, it was when I first met God when I went to jail. Nobody came that time. It was just Jesus Christ. Mm. And uh, and sometimes that's just what God wants. You yeah. don't gotta be a, have a whole bunch of people around you to to receive God. Sometimes you gotta get alone. You got alone. You gotta you gotta get alone and and and, and cancel all these voices that are in your head and that that are leading you astray. Yeah. And God says, you know what? I need you just to sit sit put and just be still. Be still. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so a lot of people probably really like feel that right now because they're like, you know what, I ain't got nothing else to do but be still. What are you telling me, Lord? Yeah. Well, it was good because me being in there and feeling alone and feeling like no one loved me. Yeah. And at my lowest, I opened up that Bible. Mm -hmm. And then I started to read the words of God. See, I was raised in a church. Okay. I believed my my parents showed good examples and instilled faith, but I just went my own way. I was rebellious. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus. Just wasn't a follower and wasn't submissive, right? So I was just rebellious and disobedient. But then I get locked up, and now I open up this Bible, and now I'm not listening what the preacher says. I'm not listening. It's not what someone else is telling me. I'm in these words, and these words are alive, and they're active as it says. Like, they literally jump out of the page. For real, for real. And it's like, And it was like looking in a mirror as I'm reading it. God is just showing me the things in me. And then show, like I'm like this is why I do this. This is why I did that. This, what was, what was uh, one of the one of the the books that you turned to? One of the biggest ones was like when you first like w to start feeling those words popping out that you could like encourage them to go read. One uh, the book of uh, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, I'll never forget. I was sitting in jail, and I was. I was every time that because I was addicted to crack cocaine. I was on the streets. I was addicted to heroin. Yeah, share share before you get all yeah. to there. Can we can we can we backtrack a little bit and share a little bit about like who you are? You know the time that you spend in prison, like, yeah. um, and then it got to getting you to you know where you locked up and then finding finding Christ. Okay, yeah. Um, so I was born and raised in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, at age eleven, I I had good parents. Uh, they were God fearing parents. Yeah. And and they raised me right. I got an older brother, two little sisters, but I was just disobedient, always sneaking around and just doing the opposite of what they told me. Yeah. And uh, I remember at 11 years old, my my older brother got caught smoking weed and stuff, and he got in trouble. And then, because Dare told us that if you do drugs, then you end <laughs> up homeless. And they show us these pictures of homeless people. I'm like, I don't want to be homeless. Yeah. So I'm like, I ain't, this is fifth grade. I'm like, I don't want to ever do drugs because look what it does to you. <laughs> yeah. And then that summer of fifth grade, my brother gets caught smoking weed and I'm like, he's going to be homeless. He used to beat me up all the time. So I'm laughing. I'm like, <laughs> he's going to be homeless. Dang. And then the next day he wasn't homeless. Oh. So in my... So you're thinking like, I, I might be able to do this too. Yeah, exactly. That's how the enemy did it. Because in my 11 year old understanding, I'm like, he ain't homeless. So they lied to me. They told me if I if I if I do drugs, I'll be homeless. But my brother just did drugs. He ain't homeless. Mm. So now I want to do. What are they trying to hide from me? So yeah. now I was now I was open to do whatever it was. And my older brother sold drugs, so I wanted to sell drugs. So I started selling drugs and smoking weed at the age of 11. Mm. And oh, uh, that's pretty early. Yeah. I didn't do it until I I was fourteen. Okay. Yeah, it was my first time. I didn't even inhale. <laughs> I didn't, but I acted like I was high. Yeah. I did. I was acting like I was high just to be cool. Yeah. And and I. Yeah, I it I did it nothing <laughs> even happened. He's like, I don't even know what this stuff is. I don't know what they're yeah, talking about. For real, for real. Yeah. So what happened? So yeah, I at by the time I was thirteen, I was already I started drinking and popping pills. Yeah. And uh by the time I was fifteen, I was snorting coke and selling all this stuff. And my mother passed away from breast cancer. Mm. And that's really when everything How old were you? I was fifteen at this time. Wow. My sisters were ten and five, and my brother was twenty. Mm. And 
my dad started, I didn't notice at the time, but my dad started taking her because my mom was this like, she's like, God going to heal me. If God, I'm not taking them drugs. God can heal me if he wants to heal me. Yeah. And it was like, my mom passed away on December 24th, 1998, wow. Christmas Eve. And I'll never forget because the next day on Christmas, the only present that I had from her was an all black dress outfit, like for a funeral. Like she knew that she I was, was going to pass, that she was going to pass, pass away. away. Yeah. Like she knew that it it was, and and there was a peace about her with it. Like my mom had peace. She was ready. She was, she was ready for she whatever was prepared. God. She was prepared. Yeah. You know? Wow. I wasn't. Right. And then from me, just recreational, using drugs, thinking it was cool. And the thing is, too, at an eight, 11 years old, that's when also I first started freestyling. A friend of mine, uh, one of the friends of another friend came over and we ended up becoming like best friends at that time. This kid, Everton. And he's like, hey, you freestyle. I'm like, what's that? He's like, you listen to rap. I go, yeah. He goes, well, you rap. So we're just sitting there smoking weed and started freestyling. Yeah. And then... uh so that's when I started rapping and and uh and by the time so like my mom passed away, right? My dad, I didn't know he he ever was a her- heroin addict. My dad was a heroin addict before I was born. But he was kind of hit, hit hiding it. No, before I was born. He was clean by the time I was born. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he, he had he, a problem he, with heroin before oh, okay. I was ever born. And but then he when, never did it like until later. And when again? my mom yeah, he started when my mom died. He started taking all the Oxycontins that she had that she never took. Mm. So that's how he coped with the pain. And me, my drug use and everything went from having fun and hanging out and thinking it was just having fun and games and to really this is how now I deal with pain in life mm. is drugs. And you kind of got that from your dad a little bit too. Yeah. Yep. He wow. was doing the same thing. And then like obviously you started getting caught, right? Oh, or you yeah. went to boot camp. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was getting in a whole whole bunch of trouble. We're always breaking into houses and the cars, and I didn't go to school. I stopped going to school, and uh, by the time I was 17, I had some charges. They were looking to send me up. Then I was in and out of the detention center and, and GIF and everything, and then uh, I had these these charges that I was fighting in the courthouse, and then I turned 18 and caught another burglary charge, and then... Uh, so 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 just to get this straight. Yeah. You used to hit a lick. I used to hit a lick. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll get back to that. We'll get yeah. back to that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I have not, now now I got these charges I'm going to court for. Yeah. And now I got these ad charges and now I'm an adult and my my dad had got a lawyer for me and the lawyer was like, "Look, now that you're an adult, they're definitely going to send you to prison." Mm. He's like, but you still have these open juvenile char- charges. I can, we can take a plea, and while you're locked up in this boot camp, we can get it thrown in. These adult charges ran concurrent. Yeah. So I was like, I went in the next month and and took it. Mm. I was like, I'll take it. They sent me to a level ten boot camp. It's called, uh, it was FEI, uh, FEI Florida Environmental Institute, Glades in Glades County. Yeah. And they put us out there on this farm. It was crazy. They had me in a vineyard and on. Dealing with cows and shoveling and, but they, and working, but show, showing you some discipline though too. Shot right? me, showed me great discipline mm. that I needed in my life. Amen. It was a good time in my life because I wasn't sober all the way up until that time. Now I'm 18. I'm in this boot camp, and they, and it was ran by Christian uh, men that had Christian values and stuff. So that's what they implemented there. Yeah, and that's where I started to pray. I still, man, 18. This is three years after my mom passed. I still was having dreams that that my mom. Uh, was still alive and I'm like I knew you didn't die and I'd wake up and then boom I'm locked up then I'm having these dreams like oh you made it home and I wake up oh I'm still locked up and uh yeah but I got sober I started getting I used to have those dreams too when I was in jail yeah thinking that I'm free oh yeah you wake up and then you just all you see is that 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 brick wall yeah and you just like dang dang dang. I, I had dreams where I escaped I got away. Sometimes I just want to sleep through the whole time just so that I could try to escape that. Yeah. You know, just being locked up so I knew what it felt like to feel like, you know, there's nothing for me in here. Yeah. But there was something for me in there. I had no idea. Yeah. And and no matter how much you want to sleep, there's only so much you can sleep. Yeah. 
And then when you get to prison, they don't let you sleep. They wake you up for work call or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm like, man, I remember I'm in prison. I'm like, dang, Plies done lied to me. <laughs> he said he going to lay down. Do 10, jump out and thug it again. What you mean? They ain't letting us lay down. They getting us up and they putting us to work. Yeah. You know? And uh, that was another thing. So, yeah, I did that little boot camp. I got out. It was crazy because I was sober for 13 months in there. There was 13 months. Yeah. And the day I graduated, I got my GED in there. I had all these goals and aspirations. I'm like, man, I got to change my life. I don't want to continue to, I don't want this to be my life. Mm. I want I want a better life. And I'm like, maybe I need to start a family. Mm. That was my that was my thought at that time. I think I need to get out and start a family and do right. Like that, like if I find me a wife or I'm gonna settle down. Exactly. A lot of people think that way. Yeah. Like a lot of people think that and I ain't gonna lie, I was one of those people. I used to go to church for the wrong reasons because mm. there was girls there. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't got no parties or whatever mm. to go to on the on the on the weekdays or the weekends or whatever. You know, hey, let's go to church. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We go in there with all the wrong intentions because I felt like if I can get me a good girl, you know, like then they they can they can chill chill me out or whatever. Yeah. But when when you when you search in 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 the wrong direction, sometimes God be like, you know what? Yeah, I kind of use that to draw you to me, and yeah. because maybe I didn't receive God at that very moment, but He planted seeds, mm. you know, of me. Uh, well, that's for me personally when yeah. I would go to church or whatever. Yeah. So that I could relate to that. Mm. Yeah. So I, I get out, and I'm like, my dad picks me up the day he picks me up. We're on our way home, and I look over at him. I'm like, Hey, you got some Percocets? And right then and there, I started. I started all over. He had some. He had some on him. Right on him. Right on him. Dang. I popped one, got home. Everybody, hey, Bo, welcome home. You're back. Oh, look at you. You look good. Here, hit this. And I'm like, Pfft. and then Ooh. all of a sudden, I, from going in that transition of being sober and around godly men and in this environment, and then all of a sudden high, and in this environment, and all the things were going on, I started like hallucinating and seeing like demons. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine. Yeah, because I'm like, this is dark. Yeah. But then the next day, I was desensitized to it. I was already in it, and I'm back to smoking weed, and I like because you I, you didn't know anything else. Like w- anything. being out in this free world, now you now you free, like you didn't know, you didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So how could you like help somebody? Like I know we're gonna get back to your testimony, but if you could just like encourage somebody, like that that maybe that's probably went back to prison a couple of times, and now you in there again, but yeah. like. But but they never did the right thing when they went when they got free, like what's a good tactic? What's a good a good a word that you can share with them that will help them not go back? Yeah, the biggest thing this time. The Bible says, "Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good." <coughs> Say it again. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. Yeah, and and honestly, I have to be honest with myself. And that I got no business hanging around people that are doing the wrong thing if I'm trying not to do those things. Because so many times I'd get out and want to show my friends how good I'm doing and like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it, it, I get dragged into everything else, even though my intention is I'm not going to do that. But then that's me thinking that I can hang around. Like you're strong enough. Like now. I'm strong enough. Yep. But God's strength is made perfect in weakness. So I have to acknowledge that I'm weak and I have to make these precautions and make no provision for sin. Don't put yourself in a situation. Don't put yourself in an environment. Don't go hanging around people that are doing the wrong thing because one, guilty by association. The the, the charge I went to prison on, this was before that. The charge I went to prison on was a charge I didn't even do. I was just around, I was around, I was at the wrong place at the wrong time and I got convicted guilty or something. So what 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 would you say to somebody that's like, look, I'm gonna be out next month. Yeah, I have nowhere to go. I like, would, yeah, I would definitely as soon as even before you get out, start getting some info on some uh, Bible teaching churches in that area to get built into the body of Christ. Yeah, to find a a sound church and get built in and be built in with believers because there's strength in numbers in the body of Christ. We're, we're, it's called the body of Christ. Like the I, whether you, whatever your purpose you are and whatever gifts and talents and everything that God has for you and that he's already prepared for you to do in this life, you can't do it apart from the body. 
because the eye can't tell the foot, I don't need you. Facts. Right? So you need to get built into the body of Christ, surround yourself with good accountability and 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 get some uh humble leaders. yourself. Yeah, humble yourself. Like because a lot of people don't that you don't want to go to the church like just because you like, you know what, uh I don't want to ask nobody for help type of thing. Like yeah. I've been there, like where I don't want to, you know, just step out and and ask for help. Yeah. But man, I can't tell you enough times how many times the church has helped me mm. in my time of need of me just being willing to say, you know what, I don't have it all together. I need some help. And we're the body of Christ. Your burdens are our burdens. Yeah. You know, and and that's when you lock on when people will lock arms with you and help you as much as you, you can uh, we can, you know yeah. what I mean? And so yeah, get you get you plugged up in the body of Christ. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the body of Christ. Mm. Like it, if it wasn't for the body of Christ, I wouldn't be here. So like, um, it having being connected, being plugged into something is what kept me going, kept me mm-hmm. close to Christ. Haven't put myself around people uh, that are going the same direction that I'm going in, in 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 the Lord. Amen. So you got out of jail and you just started getting hooked on drugs again. Yeah. Yep. I got out. I got out of the boot camp, and. I, I'm already hooked on drugs. I meet this girl. I get her pregnant. I'm thinking that starting a family may change everything. Yeah. And and it can't. Can't nothing change me. I have this beautiful daughter, right? I want to be a father. I want to be a good husband. I, I propose to her. I get engaged. And, and but then I'm shooting heroin, right? And I start shooting heroin with my dad mm. because I get to the point where it's, it's, it's no longer working. And my dad was already doing it at a certain level. And then that's where I learned to do it. You know, did you um, ever overdose? I, when I was 15, I didn't, I never overdosed on opiates, but when I was 15, before I even went to that, right when my mom died, there was a night we went to this house party. I was on Xanax and cocaine and some uh, alcohol. I just drank some old English and that, I was, that, that don't sound like a good mixture at all. No, and then I get to the party, right? And we're pl- uh, we're like a plan to go in here and rob this house or whatever. So we go there, and the guy throws out some ecstasy on the table, and I throw two tabs in my mouth and chew them. And uh, dang, on yeah, top of all that, on top of the Xanax and the Coke and the, yeah, that that Xanax was so bad about that is it takes away all your cares. Yeah. So you feel like you you're Superman. You could yeah. you just take those. You're gonna be straight fine. Yeah, and you know. I, I, Xanax, once you put alcohol on it, I never remember what happens once Ever. I close my eyes. Mm-mm. And you know? sometimes if it's just Xanax by yourself, you just taking a couple of bars. I yeah. remember waking up and be like, what the heck happened yeah. last night? Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I, I eat the two ecstasy pills. I start, to, they had some, I remember vividly, they were playing some DMX and they're like, we're going to go get more drugs. We'll be back. And they left me there alone. And All was, alone? Yeah. I was like, all right, I'll wait till y'all get back. And I was laying on the couch. And then all of a sudden, I wake up, and it's the morning. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, bro, I thought you were going to die last night. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, we came back. I was like, I fell asleep. He goes, no, we woke you up when we came back. So I was in a blackout. And he's like, we were chilling, we were chilling. All of a sudden, he goes, you fell on the ground right there, and you started foaming out your mouth. Your eyes were in the back of your head. And he's like, I thought you were going to die. Wow. And he goes, all of a sudden, you snapped out of it screaming, Romans 10, 13, Romans 10, 13. Oof. He goes, bro, you kept saying that for like five minutes straight. For real? Yeah. And then he looks at me and he goes, what's Romans 10, 13? And here you go. You ready? Yeah. In my sober mind, I have no idea what Romans 10, 13 you is. You had no idea? No idea. You went to go read it. We, well, we left that house, went back to my house. I get my mom's Bible out of her room and I open it up. And Romans 10, 13 says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. Right? That's so powerful. So the Holy Spirit in that moment was saving me. Death was trying to take my life. Sometimes you just got to yeah. just quote the scriptures. Yeah. Call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because even though you may not be saying Jesus, yeah. you're saying the word of God because God is the word. Amen. And and he was oof, hallelujah. In, in that in that moment, I wish everything like you like I'm already about to tell you how it got worse. Yeah. Right, I went to the boot camp, got out, messed up again. Now I'm get on my way to go to prison, you know. But but in that moment, that's when I started to believe 
that there was power in the word of God mm. and that the Holy Spirit was real because I had no yeah. no sober conscience of what this was. I feel you. So That's wild. So now I never overdosed on opiates to my knowledge, yeah. right? So, But that was kind of like you was overdosing. Yeah, yeah, I was overdosing that you night. You overdosed it a lot that night. Yeah. Like yeah. of everything. Everything, <laughs> everything. Yeah. There's been many nights where I I I overdid it and I and I was scared, but I nothing like overdosing on on opiates. I've narcaned hundreds of people, yeah, literally, because they're because working in the sober living, it's like constantly, it's crazy with the fentanyl epidemic, yeah. But uh, so we'll get back into that too in a little bit, yeah, about like what you do for a living now, but. Um, so you're you're back you're you're in prison right you yeah. you, get, you go back to prison so yeah I'm with I'm I got the baby mom I'm trying to start a family but I'm shooting heroin yeah so that destroys that relationship mm-hmm. I'm out there doing drugs running around doing the same thing I always do yeah I try to sell drugs but the problem is I use more drugs than I sell so then I rob and I steal because I can't keep a job because I don't go to sleep yeah. and it's just the insanity and I always get caught so now I'm sitting in jail. Multiple times, then I get out, then I'm on probation, then I violate my probation with the ad charge, and I get sent to prison. Now I'm sitting in prison. I do two and a half years. And at at that time, I'm like, that's why when you said DJ, and there's so many people doing so much time, you know? Yeah. Like at first, the two and a half years, the 30 months, I'm like, 30 months is crazy. Yeah. It seems like so much, but yeah, then I get in there. You can wrap your head around it. Yeah, and then I get in there, and then, like, my celly's got 10 years, and so I'm like, damn. I need to stop whining. Yeah. And uh, so I, and then even in there, I, I start to try to ser- seek the Lord. I'm in prison. I'm in his word. And then I slowly get drift off into hanging around the wrong crowds yeah, in prison. Po- and politics, doing drugs. Yeah, yep. selling drugs, selling weed, do, doing all the same stuff in it's prison. It's a slow fade. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Make if you if you really had your mind made up, right? Or was it maybe it could have been some people that you um, that you stopped hanging out with in jail, or that kind of dr- made you start drifting away? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, I, what, what, what I made drifted. You, what made you like slowly start fading away in jail? Because I'm weak, and I wanted what I wanted, and I wasn't ready to submit to God completely, and and I just I was double minded. How was, big of a uh, of a mistake was that? It was a big mistake. Uh, I mean, but God still showed His mercy. His mercy still came on me. Yeah, I I, I still went to work release, but then I lost all my game time mm. because I got got I got caught getting high at uh, at work release and got sent back to prison, and they took away all my game time. Mm. So, but then God still there's consequences for sin, man. Everything, yeah. Yeah, if a God won't be mocked. We will reap what we sow. Yeah, you know it's not like I'm Teflon. God says not to test them. It, just because God loves us and He wants and He has a plan for us and has all these things He wants to do for us, that doesn't mean we can do whatever we want and not reap consequences. So, I'm at DeSoto. This is after I get sent back from work work release. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at DeSoto, they they on the rec yard they let the YOs walk the rec yard with the adult offenders. And this is where God started to show me some things. And I'm walking around and I see like 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds doing 10, 20 life. Mm-hmm. And then God was like, look, this is, they're in here and like hearing stories. And it's like, they were just doing the same thing you were doing. And this could have easily been you riding around, listening to plies, talking about how murk you having these, these thoughts of murder, playing murder music and high on ecstasy and molly and sticking and like, and, and acting foolish and acting stupid. Yeah. And it's like, man, this is. And God started showing me, he's like, the drugs are like potions, right? And the music's like an enchantment. So I, I I put these potions into my body. I'm taking these this witchcraft, these potions, and I'm listening to these enchantments that are leading me. I'm being led by spirits. Wow. Music is music is very spiritual. Yeah. Right? Music can be very spiritual. What, because what, you're speaking life? Yeah. Or you're speaking what, death. Exactly. Are we speaking life or are we speaking death? Are we promoting, are we are we using to glorify God or is this music being to glorify sin, right? So what, what is my mind being set on too, right? Because the music opens you up and it 
and it pours a message into you and sets your mind on things. God wants to renew the mind. Yeah. I need a renewed mind because just I'm born into a sinful nature with a corrupt mind. And over the years, all the things that have happened and all the choices I make, my my mind, I need a new mind. I need the mind of Christ. And the beauty the beautiful thing about it is like worship music, like and like even Christian rap, any genre that just sets our hearts and our mind on God and focuses our thoughts on him is actually a tool that 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 helps us to set our thoughts on him. He goes, seek first the kingdom of heaven, set your mind on God, set your mind on his things and everything else will fall into place. Yeah. So my flesh, my flesh don't even need help thinking about all that crazy stuff. Now I'm putting this stuff in me and putting this music that's like, and it's just feeding me down this path. And I'm shaking my head in agreement because like I work in recovery now, right? And like yeah. guys will come in and they'll be listening to that stuff that I used to listen to. And I just see me and I'm like, I'm like, bro, you you're you're worshiping God. You're trying to change your life. You say that Jesus is king, but you're listening to this music and they're like, but I just like the beat. I just like the beat. I go, but do you hear what they're saying? Yeah, but I'm not doing that stuff. I go, you're sh- you're listening to it and you're shaking your head. You're in agreement. You're in agreement, and then like at the same time, you're like the more you're re- you're you're, you're le- allowing that to pour into your heart. You're it's so it's it's watering a seed yeah. that's rooted in there. Yeah. Like once you start meditating on something that because God says meditate on Him. Yeah. And and the whole thoughts captive. When yeah. you're not doing that and you're just receiving all of this sin, you're just allowing this root to grow deep down inside of you. And that'll be harder to it starts deceiving you and yeah. the way that you think, the think the way that you think about people and and, and life in general just starts uh, distorting all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane because if to say you're a Christian, to say you're a follower of Christ, and to listen to that is like voting for Trump but wearing a Biden t-shirt. Mm. I condone this message. I support this message. Yeah. Right. So what do we really condone it? Because and 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 I lived like that for a long time. I said I was a Christian. I I was double minded. That's double minded. Yeah. Right. And God wants us to make a decision. We have to make a decision to lay these things down and say, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to follow you. And so what happened? Like as soon as you got out of, uh, obviously you got out of jail. I got out of prison. Yep. Yeah, I got out of prison. Okay, I was at, uh, I met this girl while I was at work release. And then I get out, she picks me up from the prison and I end up having a kid with her. Another and, one? Yeah, okay. another kid with another woman, right? And uh, we were in a relationship for a couple of years. Uh, we started using together, mm-hmm. and and it just got really bad, really toxic, and really bad. And uh, I ended up getting sober. I ended up getting on probation, catching some more charges, and then violating the probation. We're at now. I'm looking at ten years. Now I'm looking at rock court because it's the same thing I went to prison for, and the same thing I was on probation for, and then the same thing I just violated. It was like it's over. I'm literally thinking it's over because I went to prison for something I didn't even do. And now I'm like, I'm guilty. I'm like, guilty. They got me. And I ain't even going to deny it. And uh, But God said, uh, not guilty. Hallelujah. Right? God said, I paid that debt. Yeah. He showed up in the courtroom. I'm in there. I've already prepared myself. So this last time I get arrested... The charge gets filed under a petty theft. So when I'm standing in front of the judge at, on my violation of probation, he goes, I can't handle this case because this is misdemeanor. You got a new misdemeanor, and this is felony court. He goes, so you're going to have to deal with that later. And he goes, uh, and then he looks down at it. He goes, wait again, wait a minute. Mr. Grossnick, you know that uh, $600 is actually grand theft. If they overturn this charge, I can actually habitualize you, send you to rock court, and you could face 10 years. I said, I understand, Your Honor. He goes, okay. And then he sent me to the halfway house, JC's recovery house, right? And that was 10 and a half years ago, 2013, November. Wow. And I've been sober ever since. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, and they turned that charge over. Yeah. And I missed the court date. They put out a warrant for me. I had to turn myself in sober, trying to do the right thing. And then the judge seen me, and I'm like, and I told the, uh, I told the the owner, I'm like, look, I, I might be facing ten years, 
because they overturned it and he go bit habitualized me and sent me to rock court. And I was like, but I've already made up my mind that if I have to go to prison for 10 years, I'm going to serve God in prison for the next 10 years. Yeah. Because I have made my mind to follow Jesus no matter what. And I don't want to do this life that the enemy has been playing with me for so long. Yeah. It's a waste of time. A waste of time. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he goes, I don't think God took you out and did all this just to send you back in there. That's probably, he goes, he, he, he does use people in there. He goes, but I don't think that's what God has for you. And I was like, I like the way you think. Right? <laughs> I was like, but I'm just preparing myself because I'm ready to accept whatever God, this is, listen. Yeah. When we get to that place, when we're ready to accept whatever God's will is for our life, no matter what that path is entails but we trust and know that it's going to be difficulties but he'll be with me yeah. and that's what i want i just want to be with him mm. i surrender all control i no longer want to try to control my life and try to control you to control my life i let go and i completely accept your will for my life and that's where the peace comes in right so Amen. so that's awesome yeah wow. I'm, I'm in front of the judge and the judge goes Mr. Grossman, I don't even recognize you. <laughs> he goes, in the state, in the, the public defender, she's like, oh, they're going to give you two years probation. I was like, let me sign now. I'll sign whatever, because I'm thinking I'm ready to go in there and say, I'll take 10 years probation, and I'll just do it at JC's yeah. recovery house for the next 10 years. Yeah. I'll live there. God, I'll do life at JC's yeah, instead of going back up there so I could be in my kids' lives and try to do yeah. the right thing and help other people in. And uh, and ten and a half years later, I'm still at Jay Z's. <laughs> wow, you know that's awesome. But now yeah. you're working there. Now I'm working there. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And you're doing great things uh, yeah. in there, like you know, impacting these people's lives. Yeah. Really taking care of these people. You know, these people really need need help, and you've been you've been doing everything you can for this 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 other side of them. You know, this is ministry, the other another ministry that you're a part of. Yeah. And I just think that's really cool, and on how that. How that ministry has never given up on you and given you that given you that opportunity to be a see like a lot of people don't have but I'm telling you a lot of people have no idea where God and what uh, where God will take you and what doors He will open mm. up for you. I had no idea f- five months ago that I would be doing a prison podcast, you know, like um, impacting hundreds of thousands of people behind bars. Already been doing that. Obviously, God has been opening up that door out here in the free world. But to be able to have the, this opportunity um, to be, you know, right here is just incredible. Yeah. You know, and then everybody that's been, you know, that's a part of the team is going up with us. Yeah. Like this, the ministry is growing. You had no, I had no idea this was going to happen. So, and then just like you, like you had no idea that like you thought you about to do 10 years. Yeah. Now look what God is doing. Yeah. You know, you still, you, you, you pulled through, you did your two year probation, right? Was yeah. it two years or yeah, two? Yeah, yeah. They so he gave me so actually what happened was the public defender goes, I want to ask the judge if he'll give you eighteen months instead of twenty four and run it concurrent with your current probation, so that in nine months when your current probation ends, you can uh you can try to get early termination. So then it'll be as if nothing even happened. That's what that was her very words. Dang. So then it'll be as if nothing really even happened. And I was like this, I don't want to push it. I don't want to push it. I'm okay with the two years. I'm ready to take ten. Yeah, but give the, me the two. But the judge was being yeah. kind of cool, though, right? Yeah. Well, what happened was we're standing up there, and she asked the judge anyways, and all of a sudden the state jumps in. He's like, "Your Honor, absolutely not." He opposes it. He's like, "We're already beyond fair. Look at his record and this and that. He's got sixteen felony convictions, and all of them are burglaries and grand thefts and this and that." And then the judge looks down, and he looks up at me, and I'm like, "Beyond fair." <laughs> Yeah. Beyond fair. And he goes, you're right. Aww. We are being beyond fair. He goes, and this is where he goes, but I just don't know what it is, Mr. Grosser. I have this feeling that I'm never going to see you again. I'm going with the public defender. I'm going to give this man the 18 months, ran concurrent with his current probation. Wow. And I was like, that's God, because God softens and hardens hearts. Ooh. You know that is so awesome, and he made it as if nothing even happened. That my I got a song called Prodigal, yeah, and that's how that the last verse ends. It's like literally that's that's it's that's my testimony, and it's like that's what God does now. 
he did it here, but he's like, son, this is what I've done for your eternity. Wow. I've acquitted your charges. You were guilty. You owed eternity in hell. Yeah. But your debt has been paid. It's acquitted. Amen. Let's play that song. Prodigal. You want to play it right now? Yeah. All right, let's play it. Prodigal. Check out this song. We'll, we'll be right back. I turn my back on you I ran away to live how I want to You followed me all the way every day Buried in sin Lord, you found me You showed me mercy and grace When you put me out of my grave Oh Lord, your love is amazing I remember my mama told me to seek the Lord With all your heart and soul and strength, son, seek the Lord She said, I love you, but he loves you more And he knew you before I knew you He knew you before you were born She said that life is hard And there gonna be some storms Heartaches, heartbreaks, and that's for sure But he can keep you dry no matter how hard it pours And he can heal your heart no matter how bad it is torn When you feeling weary, run to him to be restored He'll mount you on the wings of eagles so you can soar Trust in him and he'll open and close up all your doors And he'll provide you with everything that you need and more She showed me how to pray face down on the floor She told me pray, 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 and pray some more Cause there's a battle for your soul, it's a spiritual war Don't leave that house without your Bible cause that's your sword I was young when mama died and it shook my core I ran away, I went astray and then I ran some more Satisfying the desires of my wicked flesh Disobeying God and acting like I know what's best I turn my back on you To live my life the way I wanna At age 11 started smoking on that marijuana I was deceived to believe it was fun and games But I guess it's always fun and games Till it ain't I didn't know that addiction was a slow fade I didn't know that it progressed at a slow pace By 13 I was drinking liquor and popping pills 14 I was snorting coke and starting to deal 15 mama died the pain was surreal I started using all the drugs to numb the way I feel I started using more drugs than I can deal So to feed the habit I had I had to rob and steal I spent my adolescence going in and out of jail Never learning lessons so I continued my path to hell Knowing right and wrong and choosing wrong I chose to fail We know what's right, we know what's wrong, yeah we choose to fail At age 30 I was sitting in the jail cell Sitting on a VOP, held there with no bail Facing 10 years, habitual offender I cried out with some heartfelt tears, Lord I surrender I'm so grateful you were there at the end of me I was your enemy and still you befriended me You showed up in the courtroom, defended me, acquitted me And said, son, this is what I've done for your eternity I turned my back on you On you. I ran away to live how I want to You followed me all the way every day Buried in sin Lord, you found me You showed me mercy and grace When you put me out of my grave Oh Lord, your love is amazing love is amazing Your love, your love is amazing But now Yeah We hitting licks Okay We hitting licks on the enemy yeah, tell them I about it. Yeah, no longer, we taking back everything, everything that the enemy stole. God said he restores what the locust has stolen, Yeah, right? So now we go and we snatch souls, right? We're going in here, wherever we go in the streets, in the prisons, in the rehabs, wherever we go, the enemy thinks he's so slick, but God has set us free. And God has given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to expose his lies, to Bro. tell the people the truth. Because we we got caught up in the world, we all laughing and kiki and ka ha ha ha, and we and we agreeing and lifting up sin and, and destruction, and we come and we like nah, it's not like that no more. 
You've bro. been lied to. Yep. And I I used to be so petty, bro. Yeah. When I would hit licks. Yeah. Like I know people probably watching this and saw my documentary. I used to give people grass <laughs> and take their money, bro. Like little bit that, that those were the most that dried petty, up grass the, yeah, the, the, mo- the, the <laughs> most that was the most pettiest hit of licks that I've ever yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. The little licks. But uh yeah, we was going crazy. We're gonna play that video right now too. Y'all gonna like this one. Uh. ASAP preach, brother Bo, Adrian Butler, hit a lick. Hit a lick.
Man, I love that song. That song mm -hmm. goes super hard. It does. Man, that was a super dope video too, visual. We was we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a little studio out here in Dallas that we we went up and hit up and we all got together and knocked that thing out. Adrian Butler killed that thing yeah, too, by the way. But man, that's a powerful story, man. Powerful testimony. I know everybody's been really kind of and, and we kind of just dived in a little bit. Yeah. But you'll be back and we'll talk yeah. more about that. We'll talk about more amazing things that God has done in your life. I do want to tap touch base on uh this amazing drawing. Look, check out this Look drawing. At that thing. Yeah, That's man. Official. You must have got like a paused it on a music video uh. or something like that and just drew that. That is super sick. So shout out to you. Um I think isn't that Baird? Baird. Yeah, Baird. Baird. Shout out to Baird twenty four. Super dope. Love it. Y'all keep on sending me the drawings and stuff because them things, them things are hard. I got another letter from Harris Dylan uh, from Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Shout Tampa. out. Tampa. Yeah, used to live over there in, in Newport Ritchie. Okay. For a little while. Okay. He said, "What's up, man? My name is Dylan. I'm in Florida prison. I just wanted to write you to tell you that I appreciate your music on the Pando app. Keep up the hard work. Your songs are getting me through a lot." Um and uh, uh, getting me through a lot better. That new club one drop, uh, the new club song that you did, it, uh, you snap, keep it up. Thanks, brother. Stay blessed, Dylan. Shout out to you, my brother. Mm. Um, yeah, man, we we wanna uh continue to drop the music for you guys because I know that y'all have some uh some time to listen to them. So we gonna keep on dropping them. Uh, let me know. You know, send me a letter. You want me to put like together a playlist of a whole bunch of songs that you can work out to, uh, a playlist of songs that you want to worship to. You know, let me know. We we want to uh, we want to we want to make make it uh, make it as easy as possible. If people that are doing time mm -hmm. um, for you to um, be able to worship God, to be able to turn up and continue to feed yourself things of God. Uh, but if you have anything, um, do you have anything that you would like to share with somebody? I, I usually have this part of the yeah. podcast where you just speak into that camera right there and just yeah. share your heart with anybody that might be going through something. Maybe God put somebody on your heart or a word that you would just prophetically want to just speak into their life yeah. and just encourage them. I want you to do that right now. Look, it don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you're at, what's going on right now, because the world is full of clutter and the enemy is full of distractions. But God has a plan and God loves every one of you. God loves you exactly as you are right where you're at. You don't have to clean yourself up to come to him. You just come to him as you are and he does the cleaning. He wants to do a surgery in your heart. And all you have to do is just let go and know. Just know that he's the one. He's faithful to finish the good work that he began in you. His word says that all things work together for the good of those who trust and love the Lord. So if you trust him, if you just say, Lord, I trust you because I realize that I can't even trust myself. I can't trust anything, but let me tell you, God is faithful and he will use what the enemy has intended for destruction in your life and he will use it for good. Even all of your failures and all of your mistakes, the Bible is full of people who have done wrong things, made big mistakes, and yet somehow along the line, God used it into his purpose and his plan. So if you just let go of all the shame, let go of all the regrets, Stop listening to that dirty devil who tries to tell you that somehow you have fallen too far from God's love, that you have made too many mistakes and that your life is no longer worth anything and all you need to do is die. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Because if you're still breathing right now, that's because God has allowed you to keep breathing and he has a purpose and a plan for you. And his purpose and his plan for you is completely different than what you think in your head. It's so much better. It's so much better than what you can even think. It says no man can, can even comprehend what God has in store. It's called faith. It's faith. 
trusting in God for what he says, according to his word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And God is not a liar. So God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And God has eternity for you. This life here is only temporary. No matter where you're at, whether you're in the, in the prison cell, whether you're on probation, whether you're in a, a treatment center or a rehab, or maybe you're still stuck in your addiction and you're out there and somehow you're watching this. God has a plan for your life. Yes. And you have to surrender you have to surrender everything and just, God wants a relationship with you. He wants a personal relationship with you. He wants you to cry out from the depths of your heart. He wants you to cry out to him. Tell him everything that you're feeling, everything that you're going through and cast it all on him. And he will take all of that and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. He will give you a contentment. And the love and the peace that God gives the world cannot take away. So I just pray that you just close your eyes. Give everything to God. Give all of yourself to God. And to let God just speak his love into your heart. Receive God's love. Let him wash away the shame. Let him wash away all, all the regrets of all the past mistakes. And let him to fill your heart and your mind with the plans that he has for your life. Hold on to the hope that never fails, which is Jesus Christ, the one who loves you so much that he came down, he stepped down off of the throne of heaven, came down into the world that he created as a child, an innocent child, lived the life of a poor carpenter, lived as a homeless nomad, and then was beaten and brutally murdered, taking the punishment that we deserve. I just pray that you give all that to God and let his love rest in your heart. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what's so amazing about God is that it's as if I didn't even know who you were and you stepped out into that street and then there was a car coming and you didn't see it. And I pushed you out of the way to save your life. And it hit me. Mm. And I died. Wouldn't you say that I love you for doing that? Risking my own life for you? That's what God did for you. Yes. He came down from heaven and took that beating. Spit in his face. Whipped. Brutally murdered. And he had you in mind. Mm. And he took that punishment that we all deserve. And he had you in mind. And he thought of you. And he knew that he would have a, that this mm. is what it takes to have a relationship with you. Mm. Because the sin separated us from him. Yes. And so that all you have to do is ask God into your heart. To confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and to repent. People don't want to hear the word repent. It sounds harsh. But repentance is a beautiful gift because he wants to help you. And when you allow God, when, a, when you allow God to completely take that from you, all your stress, all your anxiety, all your depression. He will set you free. And he will break every single curse and bondage of your life. And But you, what you have to do is say, Jesus, I accept you in my heart. Yes. Change me. Fill me up with your presence. And let him help you become a new person. Yeah, you may fall. You may slip up, but get back up. Yes. Don't give up. Mm. You're strong, mighty. In Jesus' name. Let's go. Amen. Man, brother Bo, thank you for coming out. Yeah, I love you, my bro. My brother. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back, guys. So y'all y'all tap in with brother Bo. Um, we'll we'll continue continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for brother Bo. Um, you know, we may look like we got it all together, but we still mm. dealing with things on the, in the free world as well. And, 
you know, it, it, we have challenges in life just like you guys. So continue to lift us up. We love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to continue to put out these God made podcasts and, and get some more guests on here. Hopefully we can get Big Yeet on here soon hey, too. Hey. And uh, Adrian Butler. And then we'll, yeah. we'll all just uh, invest here soon too and, and get in some more mics and we could just have a group podcast. W would y'all like that? Um, but hey, we love you guys. God made podcast. Let's go in Jesus' Let's go. name. God made.